Welcome to ITLAN, a podcast connecting faith, life and scripture. It's Sunday the 17th of March 2024 and this week I'm thinking about how we picture Jesus. If you had to draw a picture of Jesus, what would you draw? How do you imagine Jesus to have been? When I did an online search for images of Jesus, I found a preponderance of familiar portrayals of long, light-coloured hair, kind face, voluminous white robes, though perhaps this selection was to do with what was available free of copyright. Alternatively, there were depictions of a cross, usually empty, sometimes with a smaller cross on each side. The Bible doesn't tell us what Jesus looked like physically. Realistically, he was probably olive-skinned with dark hair, lean and muscled from all that walking. Does it matter? In some ways, yes, it does. Or rather, the way that he's portrayed by artists matters. Images convey ideas. For instance, as a child, I was familiar with the images of Margaret W. Tarrant, such as the loving shepherd. It conveys a beautiful tenderness, but there's far more to Jesus than that. These days we are more aware that the familiar portrayal of Jesus as a white European, particularly if blonde and blue-eyed, is problematic. It tells of a Christ who is a respectable member of a dominant race. And that has implications when he's proclaimed as saviour to, for example, people living in poverty in a Latin American favela or a South African township. But Jesus was a working class man from a conquered Middle Eastern people, condemned as a criminal rabble rouser. In the show notes, you'll find a link to a YouTube video which shows images of Christ from the Methodist Church's collection, The Christ We Share. They're portrayals of Jesus from different cultures, and if you watch it, you'll probably find that some are surprising and maybe even offensive. In those cases, ask yourself, why? What assumption of yours does this image challenge? What aspect of Christ? is the artist trying to convey. Images do matter. But what the flesh and blood Jesus actually looked like, sounded like, smelt like, felt like, is unimportant. What matters is who he was and is. This Sunday the Gospel reading is about some Greeks, in other words, foreign Gentiles, who came to one of Jesus' disciples, Philip, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. I assume that they didn't just want to look from a distance, but to be introduced to Jesus, to talk with him, satisfy their curiosity about what they'd heard about him and his teaching. And as St John tells the story, Their request prompts Jesus to recognise that his imminent death will, as he says, draw all people to myself. He is Christ for all to share. But why might somebody today want to meet Jesus? Curiosity is still a powerful motivator, and maybe that's all it is, at least for now. But for many, Jesus is not only profoundly human, he is the Son of God. And in coming to know Jesus, we draw closer to the divine source of our being. And as Lent draws to an end and the focus on Jesus becomes the story of that last week leading to the crucifixion and resurrection, It's a good time to join with those long-ago foreigners in praying. I wish to see Jesus. I want to meet him, to get to know him better. 
And I know from personal experience that that prayer truly prayed will be answered. Jesus promised, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. That's St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 7. But it is necessary to ask, seek and knock. One step you can take is to read the Bible and ask questions of it and about it. Another is to share in a faith community, talking with other people and asking about their experience and understanding. But be ready to jettison your preconceived ideas and to meet the Christ who is for all people in unexpected places and surprising ideas. Recognise him in the stirrings of hope, love, joy, thankfulness in your heart, and look for him where the good things of life, food, shelter, safety, healing, justice, are being shared with those who lack them and need them. The Jesus who was nailed to a cross in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago is the Christ who brings release and freedom to fettered lives today. And so I want to finish with the prayer of Saint Richard of Chichester. Thanks be to you, my Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which you have given me for all the pains and insults which you have borne for me. Most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. <laughs>